All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3 plus x is equal to 10. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting 10 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 3 plus x minus 10 is equal to 0. Now negative 10, that's the same thing as negative 8 minus 2. So now I'm going to switch the order of these and rewrite this as x to the power of 3 minus 8 plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have x to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 3 plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, x to the power of 3 minus, th or sorry, x to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 3, I can rewrite as x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now if I factor out x minus 2, I get x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0, which is the same thing as x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So now to solve this, I have two equations. I get x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x, plus, x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to 2, so this is one solution. And for x squared plus 2x plus 5 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, b is equal to 2, so I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5 all over 2a, so 2. Now this is the same thing as negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 20 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. Now the square root of negative 16 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1, and the square root of negative 1 is equal to imaginary number i. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, or sorry, square root of 16, which is 4, times i. i is the square root of negative 1 over 2, which is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2i. So two more solutions. All right, so in this problem, I have x squared minus y squared is equal to x minus y squared. So to start, I'm going to first start by expanding x minus y squared. So now I have x squared minus y squared is equal to x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So now these two x squared cancel out if I subtract x squared on both sides. So now I have negative y squared is equal to negative 2xy plus y squared. And now I'm going to add y squared on both sides and add 2xy on both sides. These two cancel out, these two cancel out, and I have... 2xy is equal to 2y squared. Now I'm going to subtract 2y squared on both sides. These two cancel out, and I get 2xy minus 2y squared is equal to 0. Now I can factor out 2y. So now I have 2y times x minus y is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have 2y is equal to 0. And I also have x minus y is equal to 0. So for 2y equals 0, this means that y is equal to 0. And if x minus y equals 0, this means that x is equal to y. And remember, y equals 0, so x is also equal to 0. So both of these variables are equal to 0. Now, I have another method of solving this. I have x squared minus y squared is equal to x minus y squared. 
So now I'm going to rewrite x squared minus y squared as x plus y times x minus y. And now I'm going to divide both sides by x minus y. So then these two cancel out and I'm left with x plus y is equal to x minus y. Now, I have x plus y equals x minus y, and I can cancel these two x's out. So now I have y is equal to negative y, meaning 2y is equal to 0, and y is equal to 0. So again, I get y equals 0. So now to check, I had x squared minus y squared is equal to x minus y squared. If both of these are equal to 0, then I have 0 minus 0 is equal to 0 minus 0 squared, meaning 0 equals 0. All right, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 40. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by taking log from both sides. So now I have log 4 to the power of x is equal to log 40. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front. So this can equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 4 to the power of x, so I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 4 is equal to log 40. Now, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log 4. So then these two cancel out, and now I have x is equal to log of 40 over log 4. Now, log 40, this is the same thing as log of 4 times 10. Because log 40, 40 is equal to 4 times 10. So I have this over log 4. And now if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, I have log 4 times 10. So this is equal to log 4 plus log 10. And now I have this over log 4. Now log 4 plus log 10 over log 4, this is the same thing as log 4 over log 4 plus log 10 over log 4. And log 4 and log 4, these two cancel out. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus log 10 over log 4. So now log 10, this is the same thing as 1. Log 10 is equal to 1. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 4. And log 4 is equal to 0 0.602. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 1 over 0 0.602, which is equal to 1 plus 1.66, meaning x is equal to 2.66. All right, so in this problem, I have x minus 4 to the power of 4 is equal to x to the power of 4. So to start, I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 is equal to x squared to the power of 2. And now I'm going to subtract both sides by x squared to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out. And now I have x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 minus x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b 
times a minus b. So in this case, this is equal to x minus 4 squared plus x squared times x minus 4 squared minus x squared is equal to 0. Now, if I expand this, I get x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus x squared times x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus x squared is equal to 0. So this gives me 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 times, these two cancel out, negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So now we have two equations. We have 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0, and we have negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So for negative 8x plus 16 equals 0, I'm going to add 8x on both sides. These two cancel out, so I get 8x equals 16. And now if I divide both sides by 8, I get x is equal to 2. Now for 2x squared minus 8x plus 16, I can factor out 2. So I get x squared minus 4x plus 8 is equal to 0. And now this is the same thing as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 8. So I get, I get x equals negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 8, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now this is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16, minus 32, over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is equal to 2 plus or minus 2i. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 729. So for my solution, I obviously want to find the value of x. So I'm going to start by taking the power of 3 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And for a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. I can switch these two places. Meaning, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So right here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And we can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So this is the same thing as x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And this is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, 729 is the same thing as 9 to the power of 3. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And remember again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3, that's going to equal 9 to the power of 3 times 3, which is equal to 9 to the power of 9. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 9 to the power of 9. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, 
x to the power of 3 is equal to 9. Now to solve this, all I have to do is take the cube root on both sides. So now I have the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 9. And the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to x, so I have x is equal to the cube root of 9. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So I obviously want to find the value of x for this problem. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 77 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n, right? And a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. They're both the same thing, it doesn't matter the order. So now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. And because all of these equal each other, this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So over here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77. And we can think of x to the power of 77 as m and 77 as n. So now, remember this is the same thing as, I can switch these two places. So now I have x to the power of 77 to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 77 equal to the variable y. So now if I substitute in y for x to the power of 77, I get y to the power of y is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y to the power of y equals 77 to the power of 77. This means that y equals 77. And remember how we let x to the power of 77 equal y. So now I have x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So to solve this, I'm going to take the power of 1 over 77 on both sides. So I have x to the power of 77 to the power of 1 over 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 1 over 77. So I get x is equal to the 77th root of 77.